Hey friends, this is Visionary 3D. And in this video, I wanna show you my GPU-based particle system. So you can see that in the center of this universe, I have a point light, which is red. And this point light is illuminating all of these particles. A couple of forces are being applied to these particles and the entire calculation is happening in parallel on the GPU. So this is the fascinating part about this particle system. Very minimal work here is happening on the CPU. And this is fascinating because uh, I think there are around a couple of thousands, uh, maybe tens of thousands of particles in the scene. And uh, the GPU is able to calculate these results very effectively and efficiently. One more thing to note about this particle system is that the individual particles in here are coming from a single GLB file. And this is very fascinating. So I downloaded this GLB file from Sketchfab and I imported it into the engine and it's being used as a base model for this particle system. One very interesting feature of this system is that I can use any GLB file. So I'm gonna go into code and I'm gonna swap this model with an avocado.glb file. And now you can see that, that the individual particles in here are avocados. <laughs> this is quite funny, but this creates a very interesting, beautiful effect. Of course, the use case of this is that you can instance any model and you're, you're gonna be able to position all of your instances with um, an algorithm that runs in parallel on the GPU. So this is very useful in many, many cases when doing procedural generation and things like that. So at first I had this renderer, which was able to render pretty basic objects like spheres, cubes, and things like that in web GPU. And I got most of the rendering code from this repo for by Cody Bennett. This is an amazing example of how to write a renderer in web GPU. So I copy pasted a lot of the code from here. Obviously I changed it a lot um, to make it kind of my own code. And this is something that I do. If you want to take inspiration from other people's code, don't just copy paste it right into your project. Look at it as a starting point rather than as something that's gonna work for your use case because everybody's use case is different and you kind of have to implement your own changes and your own systems on top of what other people have built. And in order to do that, you need to understand their code and in many cases, change it. So that's exactly what happened in this case. Uh, I was able to do some pretty basic rendering then. But then I thought, I wanna do GLTF rendering because uh, this is pretty limiting and this doesn't allow for uh, super complex scene rendering. And so I thought, okay, the next step naturally is to do GLTF import. So this is the result of my GLTF import. I'm able to import any GLTF file and I'm able to upload the textures to the GPU and render the GLB model effortlessly. Now, in order to make this happen, I started my journey by rendering a very simple GLB file like this avocado without any textures, uh, without anything, very simple stuff. And I got this by looking at this article uh, from Will Usher. It's a great article that teaches you about GLTF, the GLTF format. Uh, it's called From Zero to GLTF with Web GPU. And it's a series of articles which you can read. And this, this is just a great resource. So I started with this. And then after that, I continued following the tutorials and the articles. And I managed to do some more complex GLB rendering like here. So this is an example of a mesh I was able to render back then. And after this step, I, I, I thought it's probably time to do some texture uploading as well and uh, read the textures from the GLB file and render them. So that's what I did next. And I was able to fully load GLTF files with textures 
I did some additional shader code to be able to handle roughness and middleness and ambient occlusion maps and things like that. And I got this result, which is what you see right here. So I'm very happy with this result. Uh, it's able to render GLTF files, but the natural next step after this was instancing these models. So now this is a compute shader that positions the instances in a cube. And after running this on a couple of instances of the GLB model, we get this, which is pretty neat. And uh, as you can see, I'm able to use GPU instancing, drawing all of these models in one draw call, and I'm able to position them based on a compute shader. So this is, this is already a great system. If you now create a compute shader that changes the positions of these models every frame, you get an animation. And that's exactly what we're doing with the particle system. So now I can run the particle system compute shader on, on these models and change their positions each frame in parallel with the GPU. And this is very fascinating to look at. Obviously, this is also very funny because nobody does this, but this is now a very powerful system because we can define and determine the position, rotation, and scale of each particle in a compute shader, which is very, very powerful. And after all of this, we can run these algorithms on a proper GLTF mesh and get this beautiful particle system, which is fully running on the GPU, very fast, very efficient. And yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful to look at. I'm very happy that I got this result and I'm happy to share the process with you. I hope you learned something today. And if you did, please give me a like and comment down below if you like breakdown videos like this. And if you like more of them, please let me know and subscribe to my channel. I post daily updates on Twitter. So if you want, follow me there as well. And I guess thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next videos.